We live in an amazing time. Everyone wants success. So we get life coaches, we get career coaches, we get peer coaches, we go to universities and do MBAs. And even when your parents send you to school, they send you to succeed. Get a good job so you can become successful. And everyone is chasing the success and no one seems to know what the success looks like. Well, a lot of people, success is money. And yet you look at some of the rich people and Allah knows they need help. They are suffering. So just judging a person by his bank balance is not sufficient the criteria for success. And to others it's fame. You know, how many likes do you have on Facebook? How many people follow you? You will see that a lot of the famous people and my Allah Rabbul Izzah is in the burden of all are going through great difficulties uh, in dealing with this, uh, with this fame. So trying to find this elusive success, we go back to what the Creator said and there's no definition better than the one Allah Rabbul Izzah gave. Listen to it my dear brothers so that you understand and engrave it in your hearts and in your minds. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, listen, listen. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ Whoever traverses over Jahannam, whoever is saved from Jahannam and enters Jannah, that person is indeed successful. So success, my dear ones, is to live a life that would lead you to Jannah. And no one understood this better than the companions of the Prophet when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, the inhabitants of the blessed city of Medina um, are called the Ansar, the helpers, because they opened their houses and their hearts and their doors for the immigrants that came from Mecca. And they sacrificed everything. SubhanAllah, you look at the stories. Um, a Sahabi comes uh, from Mecca and the people of Mecca, the disbelievers of Mecca, took everything from him. They took his animal, his mount, they took his money, they took his kids, they took his wife. And he, he walked through the 450 kilometer desert and in an acute heat alone. And he arrives in Medina al-Munawwara in the Rasul salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi has just come out of the masjid and he sees this man who he knows from Mecca, you know, Qurayshi from his own tribe. And he looks at him and normally when you travel, you know, you you bring luggage and you bring a camel and you bring some money. This man is just lone man and you can imagine his lips have cracked in the heat and his feet are blistered. And, and um, so the Rasul looks, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamu alayhi, he goes, what did you bring? So he says, nothing, O Prophet, I lost everything. So the Rasul said, no, you gained Jannah. So the Prophet sallallahu called an Ansari, uh, uh, in, you know, a citizen of Medina. He says, come, you are brothers with this muhajir. And I want you to see how the Ansar opened their hearts and their homes and their lives to the, what hospitality they extended to these immigrants that came. So he tells them, he goes, come, my brother, look, I have two houses. See which one you like. I will vacate it for you. It is yours. Take it. Come, look, I have two businesses. Look at which one you like. I will hand the keys of that over to you. And to the extent, subhanAllah, mind-boggling, look, I have two wives, look at which one you like, I will divorce her, wait for her idda to finish, then marry her. They showed an example of hospitality not to be surpassed in history. These were the Ansar. Islam was indebted to them. The, the companions are indebted to them. Not only this, when it came time for campaigns and battles that had to be fought and, you know, in the defense of the deen, it was the Ansar, it was their men and their arms and, and you know, Subhan al Khaliq. And the Prophet watched Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamuhu alayhi. And these Ansar, and their battles, their campaigns in Islamic history in which there's not a single Muhajir in it. The Ansari went by himself, finished the job and came back. 
So the Prophet وسلم, is longing for an opportunity, you know, that somehow I should repay the favor. But the Ansar never ask. They never say, you know, give me this or give me that. And eventually one day, these blessed individuals, the Ansar, the people of Medina, uh, they had a well which was, you know, outside the, the city and for the irrigation of their land and feeding of their livestock, they had to go out and get the water. So a young man had a, had a dazzling idea, a legendary idea, and he comes and he tells the others, he goes, listen, there's an easy solution to this. We go to the Rasul, salawat rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi, and we say, Ya Rasulullah, make dua that Allah Rabbul Izza open for us water in the middle of the city. Like the same Lord that brought out Zamzam in the middle of Mecca, he will bring out water here in the middle of Medina. You just make dua. So they said, brilliant idea. All the problems will be solved. They'll, you know, they'll be ease. And so now they enter the masjid in their group. And on their faces, you can see that they're going to request. The Rasul knows people. So when he looks at them, he tells the people, he goes, Marhaban bil Ansar. Glad tidings to the Ansar. Welcome to the Ansar. Today, whatever they ask me, I will give. Today, there's nothing they will ask that I will not give. So they heard as they're walking the word of the Rasul, salawat rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi, that whatever we ask today, he will give. And all of a sudden, the well became too small. So they realized that it's a blank check. Anything we ask, it will, it will be given. So the young man says, O oh, Prophet of Allah, give us a moment so we can discuss. So they discuss with one another. And what do you think they asked for? So they said, listen, forget about the well. Let's ask the Prophet to ask Allah to forgive us. So they come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah, ask Allah to forgive us. So the Rasul raises his hand. Allahumma ghfir lil ansar. Oh Allah, forgive the ansar. الأنصار, and the sons of the Ansar, and the children of the Ansar, الأنصار, and the children of the children of Ansar. And they shout out and look at the goodness of their hearts. وَمَوَالِينَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَمَوَالِينَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And our servants, O Prophet of Allah, and our servants, O the Rasul said, and their servants, do you see? that they understood that the greatest success is the success of the Akhirah because they could have asked for anything. What would you have asked for? And they go, no, no. Akhirah is the real success. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازْ The one who traverses over Jahannam and enters into Jannah. He has succeeded. And look at another, another Sahabi so that you don't think it's an you know, abstract incident. He used to watch the Rasul Salawatu Rabbi wa salam hu alayhi. And he used to see people gathered about him, around him during the day. They used to come and be at service. And at night, and it wasn't like our world, you know, there wasn't lights. So once darkness came, it was dark. So and, and then when the night fell, everyone went to their homes and he realized that who will serve the Rasul if he asks for something, he needs something. So, you know, without making a fuss, he came and sat by the door of the Prophet all night. And he did this one day, two days, and then the Prophet ﷺ came out at night. And he saw him sitting. So he asked him, what are you doing here at this hour? So the man explained, Ya Rasulullah, during the day you have everyone at your service. At night there's no one. I thought, what if the Prophet needs something? What if he wants to send something? I want someone on an errand. There should be someone. So I came and said here, in the event that you might need something. So this, this gesture, unspoken, he's just quietly sitting. He didn't come knock on the door. Ya Rasul, if you need me, I'm here. So he's just seated. And look at the ikhlas and the hearts. So the Rasul says, Sal tu'ta, ask it will be granted. He says, oh Prophet, I need, to, I need time, let me think about this. So then he comes back, and what do you think he asked for? I want your friendship and companionship in Jannah. 
So the Prophet وسلم, asks him, who taught you this? Like what a thing to ask for. So he says, Allah put it in my heart. So then the Rasul says, Khalas, now you make ex- increase in your sajda, zin in your salah, so that it can ease in the process of my dua. I will make dua to facilitate it, you increase your ta'a in your ibadah. That they realized that فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازَ that, that jannah, that is success. And how to get there, my dear brothers and sisters, how do you secure jannah? Allah Rabbul Izzah says, whoever obeys Allah and obeys the Prophet, indeed he has earned the great success as in jannah, meaning live through this life living in obedience of Allah and in the obedience of the Rasul and that is your Jannah in this world and your Jannah in the Akhirah anytime you obey and do good Allah brings peace and tranquility into your heart and your mind uh, you have clarity of vision and purpose peace and solace of heart goodness of your surroundings and this is Jannah this is what everyone is seeking in this world and in the Akhirah it goes to the real Jannah and you get it. This is for those that want specific things to do. So Allah Rabbul Azza says Qad aflahal mu'minun Indeed successful are the believers. So the first thing my dear ones f- correct and fix the Iman the belief in your hearts. Make sure that your belief is correct Make sure it is the belief that Allah and His Prophet wanted and make sure it is at the level that is desirable to Allah and His Prophet. Second, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Those who in their salah they have khushu. Khushu is the fear of Allah Rabbul Izza, meaning stand in salah with your heart filled in awe and reverence of the master you know i stand in front of the king of kings and the master of masters the one who made the sun and the moon and the one whom when i say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen he jalla subhanah responds and says hamadani abdi and you say ar-rahman ar-rahim and he jalla subhanah says athna alayya abdi fill your heart with that khushu and the awe and reverence of the master. So Iman, khushu, and then Allah Rabbul Izzah says, those who avoid silliness, you know, time wasting, this game and that game and this social media and that social media and where it is for khair, walillahi alhamd, you know, you're using it for da'wah, Allah bless it and increase it. But where it is just unnecessary time wasting, Allah Rabbul Izza says, avoid time wasting. And then Allah Rabbul Izza says, Jalla Subhana. Allah Rabbul Izza doesn't say, in those who give zakah. He says, in those who work for zakah. It seems as though it is people or they are people who work to become or to have enough for their own needs. But then, also have enough to give extra to people so they work to be able to give zakah or another translation they work for zakah as in they promote remind people to give zakah they give zakah they role model it to people become self-sufficient become people that have enough for their own selves and then become people who are able to help others my Allah Rabbul Izza uh, make it a cause of good for you Allah Rabbul Izza says and those who safeguard their chastity except for their wives and those others who they have rights over as in you know they, they're allowed to exercise their desires with uh, and in that case there's no blame on them Muslims never break your your promise never break your trust and those who safeguard their prayers organize your day around your salah not your salawat around your day and then Allah Rabbul Izzah says these people who believe and do these righteous deeds they are the ones who will inherit what will they inherit they will inherit Jannatul Firdaus and there they will live in eternity may Allah gather me and you in Jannatul Firdaus